the big, big idea that Seth Golding put out was this idea that, you know, one way to sell consumers something in the future is simply to get his or her permission in advance. Because if you've got a relationship with somebody already, and you expect that you can deliver value to them, then by delivering value to them where they are ready to receive that value because they know who you are, they have dealings with you, and they trust you, that is, you've been able to command their attention once previously, then what you have then is this really profound ability to monetize that relationship in a very ethical way. So this is really what the question is all about tonight. Do you have permission? And the issue really is how do you get people's attention in the first place? Because if you've got a product or you've got a service, somehow you've got to bring that to the attention of your audience. And as we'll see, the problem is that what we are doing today, what marketeers are doing today, is they're not really thinking about the best interests of the people that they want to have relationships with. What they're doing is interrupting them. And so, essentially, if you want to be successful in the connection you come with whatever products or service you've got, you've got to stop interrupting people, and you've got to start adding real value into their lives. Now, this is the definition of interruption marketing that basically speaks to this idea that you're going to take your product and you're going to hammer away incessantly to try and get people's attention so that they will then be enamored with your offering and they will then part with their hard-earned cash and they will make you rich in the process. Now this used to be, you know, okay, once upon a time. This was before the connection economy came along. So now in the connect, today in the connection economy, we have so many sources of distraction. The reality is we tune it all out. Nobody's paying attention. And a really good example of interruption marketing is you're watching something on TV, for argument's sake, or indeed on a YouTube channel. And before you can get to what you want to do, you have your attention interrupted because somebody's going to try and sell you something. And a really good example of this is washing powder. Nobody's wandering around day after day thinking about which brand of washing powder is really right for them and what the, uh, what the value is that washing powder adds to people's lives. So naturally, there's a role for interruption marketing. And the Tide, the washing powder manufacturers have nailed it. But if you ask yourself, well, you know, with your sophisticated product, your sophisticated service, your sophisticated offering, should you be using the type of techniques that, say, for example, Tide are using to bring their product to your attention? And actual fact, have you got the resources to be efficient at doing this? Given that there are so many channels now that you can be trying to push out your message, interrupting people as they go. And I would suggest to you that you don't have the resources to do it. Certainly if you're a small business, you absolutely don't have the resources to do it. Never mind the question whether it actually works or not. So this is interruption marketing.